Superlatives are very much overused on YouTube, but I promise that in this case, the shoe really does fit. This is Anshuan style triple stuffed posu or broken bow. And in our opinion, at least, it's the best bow in the world. What makes it so special? Well, imagine for a second a cross between a fluffy dim sum style chassis bow with a layered laminated pastry like a croissant. That is basically the dough, the aggressive fluffiness coming not from yeast, but from an aged starter activated with fermented rice, and the layers the result of a generous application of lard that should be immediately recognizable to most bakers. And while that would probably be enough to top our list of favorite baozas ever, we're not done yet. The filling, that triple stuffing, takes this baozza from A tier to undisputed champ. It's a mix of scallion pork, of course, but it's combined with two other fillings that really amp things up. First bit is a bit of bean paste, but this isn't your run-of-the-mill bow filling bean paste. It's a bit more on the savory side, and to ensure smoothness, follows the same washed paste method that these days is usually reserved for the fancier sorts of mooncakes. Then for the third leg, you've got some crushed perilla seed mixed with sugar, which rounds things out and gives the filling its characteristic sweet-savory combination. It's perfection in a bun. So it's probably pretty obvious why, as soon as we tasted our first bite of this bun many years back, we knew that we had to share it with you. But as soon as that ambition materialized, we were presented with a bit of a problem. You see, this is Anshun. It's a charming little city south of Guiyang in the Guizhou province that's probably best known for its waterfall 40 clicks outside of town. Historically, it started as a military outpost, and even today, it's pretty small by Chinese standards. So, like, there's pretty much nothing out there on how to make these guys proper. Now, the neighboring Yunnan province also has their own version of posu bao, but their dough nowadays usually relies on yeast, and of course, the fillings are also completely different. So it's taken a while. But after over five trips to Guizhou, eating around and talking to people, countless hours of pulling at the faintest strings researching this, and even longer brute force trial and error testing, Steph finally figured out how to reverse engineer these bow. Seven months. Mm -hmm. Seven months of testing. It's been a long time in the works, so let me hand it off to her to give you an overview on how to make them. So yeah, Po Su Bao, it may seem a little bit complicated at first glance, so we will have a high-level overview in the form of a baker's schedule, and then we'll get to the feeling later. This is a classic sponge and dough method operating at a room temperature about 26 degrees Celsius, and here's what you do. First, in the morning, make Lao Zhao starter using active Lao Zhao rice wine. 12 hours later in the evening, make the sponge using the Lao Mian starter and let it ferment overnight. Next morning, mix the sponge with flour and water to make the bao dough. Knead it till smooth and rest for 30 minutes. Um, and then roll out the bao dough, apply lard and roll it up and then another 30 minute rest. Portion it out and wrap. Finally, give it a 30 minute proof and then we can steam. And now we can officially begin our journey to the best baozi that ever exists, where everything begins with Lao Zhao fermented rice wine. Traditionally in Southwest China, baos and buns are often made with this kind of old school starter catalyzed by Lao Zhao fermented sticky rice wine, and Po Su Bao is no exception. So here we have 250 grams of sticky rice. Rinse it clean, soak it for 4 hours in summer and overnight in winter. When the rice is done soaking, string and evenly put it in a steamer lined with a wet cheesecloth. Cover steam it over medium heat for 45 minutes in total, but come back every 15 minutes to check on the water level and spray a cup of water over the rice to prevent it from drying out. 45 minutes later, shut off the heat. Let the rice cool down in the steamer till it reaches 35 degrees Celsius. Put the rice of your fermentation container of choice, then we can add in our herbal dry yeast. So this kind of dry yeast balls are made with a melange of different kinds of herbs and rice flour. 
A ball like this can usually be used in about 1.5 kilograms of sticky rice. So just weigh your ball. Here we have about 11 gram, and we'll only need one sixth of it as we are only doing 250 grams of rice. So shave off about 1.8 grams of the dry yeast ball. Dissolve it with drinking water. Mix it in with the sticky rice. Then press the rice firmly and make a little observation hole at the center. And now cover and put the container in a warm place away from sunshine and let it go for 72 hours or three whole days. Three days later, the Laozao rice wine should be ready. If there are some kind of gray strings on top of it, don't panic. It's just a sign of very active fungus. Just scrape off that layer and the rest is some very nice and light Laozao fermented sticky rice wine for your dessert, seasoning, and Lao Mian starter. And now we have our Laozao fermented sticky rice wine ready, we can make our Lao Mian starter. Here we have 50 gram active Laozao rice wine, half rice, half liquid. Mash it together in a clean container, then mix in 50 grams AP flour and 25 gram water. Cover, put it in a warm, dark place for about 12 hours or when it's nice and bubbly like this. And then we can make the sponge. So for the sponge, simply mix in 60 gram uh, starter with 135 gram water, stir well, then add in 300 grams AP flour, form it into a ball, press it down, cover, and let it ferment overnight. Next morning, the sponge should be double in size and have like a nice web-like structure inside. And now we can start making the actual bao doughs. So to make the bao dough, in a big mixing bowl, dissolve 30 grams sugar in 135 grams water, then add in the sponge. Together with 300 gram AP flour and 1 gram or a quarter teaspoon sodium carbonate. Calling for sodium carbonate may seem a little bit odd here because the dough smells so nice and fragrant without the slightest hint of sourness. So calling for a strong alkaline component sounds a little bit counterintuitive. But here's the deal. The recipes in Laozao rice wine will produce some acid protease, which will break down protein, and in this case, the gluten in the flour. Without enough gluten, the dough will become overly soft, and the final product will have this kind of a sticky and dense layer, which oddly have some kind of dry texture when buy into it. So in order to control and balance the acid protease, I tested it with baking soda, baking powder, or even adding more lard. Nothing works except sodium carbonate. So no stopping here, but you can check out how to make your own sodium carbonate by baking your own baking soda here down in the pin notes. So right, back to the dough. Mix the sodium carbonate with the flour. Then mix the dry ingredients with the water and the sponge dough. When everything roughly combines together, transfer it onto a working surface. And now we'll need to knead it for about 12 minutes. And when kneading, remember to repeat that fold and knead motion in order to develop the gluten. Do not need light pushing knead. About 12 minutes later, or when the dough becomes white and smooth like this, weigh and divide it into three even pieces, each about 320 grams. And then grab each piece, fold the cut side into the center, make sure the surface is all smooth, then shape it into a lock. Work through the three pieces, cover and let it rest for 30 minutes. Quick note. When your dough is resting, now will be the time to take out the lard and your fillings and let them come back to room temperature. 30 minutes later, we can roll out the dough. So bounce shops will usually use a dough sheeter or a massive working surface. But for us working at home with limited surface, we'll need to handle the dough in batches. So generally dust your work surface, take out one lock, Divide it into two even pieces and then put one back to the back first. Now take the first half piece, roll it into a long sheet, 
about 20 by 70 centimeter in size and about one millimeter thick. Now evenly dot on 15 grams of lard and gently apply that all over the sheet, even the edges. Then carefully roll it up from one end and turn it into a lock. Put this lock back to your Ziploc bag, take out the other half of this dough, does the work surface again, roll it out again, and apply lard again. But before you roll up this sheet, take out the previous roll up lock, place it at one side of the sheet, then start rolling it up from here. This way, we can achieve more layers at the end. Now put this rolled up and finished up lock back into your Ziploc bag, let it rest for 30 minutes. Meanwhile, take out a second dough, divide, roll up, apply lard, and repeat the process again till you finish with all the remaining dough. If all this process seems a little bit confusing to you, here's a uncut video where we talk a little bit more in detail about how to pr approach this. After you finish all the dough, the first log should have finished resting, and now we can move on to the wrapping step. Oh, and yeah, wrapping needs feelings. Let's talk about that, shall we? As for all the baozi, there are so many kinds of feelings to choose from, and here we are doing Sanxian three delicacies, the most beloved Puosu baozi feelings. So three delicacies, or Sanxian, it's an umbrella term used throughout China to describe different kinds of mix of ingredients. And in this Anshan style Baozi three delicacy feelings, the start is probably the washed bean paste, Xi Sha. So Anshan Xi Sha uses a type of legume called Lan Dou, which confusingly doesn't even have a standard Chinese name. So long story short, after hunting down some rabbit holes, it seems like these beans are also called bamboo beans or rice beans in English. Unless you're in India, otherwise you can sub this with azuki beans. This is what we're gonna do in a video for replication purpose. Here we got 250 gram thoroughly rinsed azuki beans. Toss it in a big bowl and cover it with water about an inch over it and let it soak overnight. Next day, just toss them in a pot together with 1 liter of cool water and a quarter teaspoon of sodium carbonate. Bring it to a boil and let it cook for an hour on medium-low heat. And after that time, we can start the rinsing process. So after your beans cool down to touch, we can start the washing process. Just scoop some of your beans into this contraption made with a strainer and a cheesecloth or even an old t-shirt, whatever that works for you. And start pressing the beans into your strainer and make sure that's only just some shells left on the strainer and the bean paste itself that goes into the back. Work through your beans in batches and then just squeeze out the water in the back and what's left in the bag will be the washed bean paste. And then take this washed and squeezed dry bean paste, put it into a pan, mix in 100 milliliters of neutral oil and 60 grams of brown sugar, and heat on medium low. Start mixing it and frying it together till you got this kind of thick consistency that can stand and the color turns really dark and this bean paste will be ready. Now just take it out, put it in a bowl and let it cool down. You can store them in a Ziploc bag and keep in the freezer. It stays good like forever, well at least up to 3 months. Just take out about 6 tablespoons for this batch of baozi. So with the bean paste sorted, let's make our second delicacy, the yinzi, or a pounded sugar and perilla seed mixture. This one's easy. Just pound together half tablespoons of sugar and half tablespoons of toasted perilla seeds till it turns into a coarse powderish consistency. You should be able to find perilla seeds in Asian supermarkets since it's also used in Korean cooking. If you can't find it, you can also just straight up get one tablespoon of granulated sugar ready for the wrapping. 
Now move on to our third delicacy, scallion and pork mint. Here we have 150 grams of pork hind. You can also use pork belly in this case. Just cut the fat into small cubes and mince up the lean. And now hand mincing doesn't seem that demanding in comparison, right? Anyway, just mince up the lean about to uh, this consistency, then add in the seasoning, which it's listed on the screen. Mix and stir till it's a bit sticky, then add in the fat and the scallion. Give it a quick mix and coat it with about a teaspoon of oil, another quick mix and set aside. And now our three delicacies are done, we can finally wrap. So take out the first roller block you put in your bag, cut off the two uneven ends, but don't waste, just stack them together and make them into tiny buns. And now we have our lock. Let's portion it into four even pieces. With a quick and clean motion, tear it off in the middle, then tear each section into two parts again. And now we can wrap. So why tearing it off instead of cutting it off? Well, I found in testing that tearing it off really seals the end of the dough really well instead of cutting the inside will kind of get squeezed out. So this is a much cleaner way to separate your dough. Now let's wrap our baozi. Just grab one piece, gently press it down to widen it a bit into a square roundish disc. Then fill in one tablespoon of pork mince, half tablespoon bean paste, and half teaspoon of that yinzi sugar perilla mixture. Then grab one side, pinch it up, and start pleating. Slightly tilt it outward and let the wrapper form a little pocket when doing so. Now, one characteristic of Po Su Bao is that flaky, raggedy look. So when you are pleating, don't sweat. Just make sure the pleats are like pinched together and you are fine. Now, work through those four pieces. Place each one on a small piece of parchment paper. Put them in a steamer and cover to prevent drying it out. And then take out the second rolled up lock that you put in your sublock bag. Repeat the portioning and wrapping process, and then work through the second and the third lock. After wrapping all the buns, we can move on to the final step, proving and steaming. So put your steamer together with your baozi over 35 degrees Celsius water and let it proof for 30 minutes. And after that time, steam your buns on a big pot of boiling water on high heat for 13 minutes. Time's up, heat off, let it sit in the steamer for a minute, and then take it out. And here you go, your perfect flaky layered po su bao. The best baozi that ever exists, in my opinion. So yeah, po su bao, to put in the words from the baozi shop owners in Guizhou, this baozi, it's not hard, it's all about experience. And to this day, I completely agree. And here you go, all the experiences I gather along this long journey trying to reverse engineer it. And I hope you bakers and dough witches out there can give it a try and take up the challenge. But if you do attempt to make po su bao dough, do check out the pen note because there are still more details that we want to talk about, but just couldn't fit in this already really long video. And finally, check out the recipe in the description box and a heartfelt thank you for all the patrons for your great support so that we can take time and delve into projects like this. And finally, of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking demystifying stuff.